I honestly don't know if I have any production secrets, but if I did have any, this video would expose them all. So if you didn't know, I'm part of a music business mentorship program called the Music Entrepreneur Club, musicentrepreneurclub.com, along with Kato on the track and Dame Ritter. And we talk a lot about music business and uh, you know all that comes with that. that I focus specifically on music business for producers, but we also hold regular beat critique sessions and tutorials. And uh, one tutorial that I recently held had to do with, I don't want to say creating fake samples, but kind of. Also, just overall making your beats sound more organic without using any types of samples, just VSTs. Because a lot of producers wonder how to get their songs sounding more soulful, more aged, more vintage, more organic, better textured, less fake sounding. So I ran a session, it's long, it's over an hour, uh, with five techniques, I called it my five step program. This technique, the fourth technique, is one that I wanted to show all of you for free. If you want to see the full video, it's on musicentrepreneurclub.com. I encourage you to join. It's not expensive at all. But check out these techniques that I use making beats, and I'm actually going to make a beat from scratch using them. And to answer your question, why don't you sound like Bob James? Is because Bob James is a better player than all of us. And that's what I had to realize when it came down to my production shortcomings. I was It was a problem with how I was playing. And I think a lot of us focus on the gear we're using. I need better VSTs so my, my tracks can sound realer, right? Um, and that's not always the case. It's, it's very rarely the case because as I showed you in step one, you can take a really synthetic, not well played um, VST, you know, just a little riff with two fingers or one finger and make it sound aged to make it sound sampled. But with advanced production just going beyond just we want to focus on you know it, our technique our playing what a lot of people will do when they're playing because they don't have a musical background and this is the unfortunate reality you're going to have to practice this a little bit thank goodness for youtube you can go on youtube and learn how to play anything anything any instrument you want but when it comes to keyboard, there is no lack of uh, content on YouTube. Because a lot of what a lot of people will do is, with limited technique, they'll go. And okay, it sounds cool, but it's not super organic sounding. It doesn't sound like something that you would necessarily hear on record. I mean, it's Rhodes, so it sounds good no matter what you do. I can just, like, that sounds good just because it's Rhodes. But um, a lot of that is going to have to do with our technique and how we play. So instead of sitting down in front of the Rhodes and doing something like this, we can... Um, fatten our chords out, add two hands, and instead of playing just, you know, straight notes, we can, um, I don't know what this is called. It's not, it's not glissando, stack trace already talked about this. It's not grace notes. We're just kind of staggering how we play. So there's a difference between... And then the other thing, obviously, is learning more chords. That's why I had Stack Trace on. And by popular demand, I'm going to bring him back uh, so you can learn more chord voicings from him that you can start em employing in your beats. But simply just changing the way you play or observing your, you know, musicians that make music that you think is dope, that you like sampling, just analyzing how they're playing their chords. You don't have to become them but you can mimic their technique a little bit and, and create better beats, better, um, better chord progressions, better melodies for yourself in your own beats. All right. 
just gonna stick with two chords. We have a question. Um, how do I personally mix my electric piano? Uh, I EQ. Some of the low end out. There's a lot of mud there. And then I just I don't do anything else to it, honestly. Same with drum processing, honestly. I don't do much. I just use sounds that I like and layer sounds, drum sounds. Um, I mean, use all what I was doing when I was using the decap kit. I wasn't doing anything cool. It's just his drums sound good already. Like there's nothing I need to do to that. It's just a hard ass kick. And you know, you can, I like uh, this kit. This is an older kit. I like their snares too. I'm just going to use this as an example beat, and you'll see why. Yeah, and with, you know, you, you can play these live, um, but I'm just going to program them in, and I'm going to program them in in a way where they're not on the grid line. It's just this kind of haphazard timing. So it sounds maybe like what I would play live. I can change the velocity, so it's, it's a little more humanized. I like how that sounds. I'm just going to copy and paste it over and over. That's, those are my hi hats. Darrell talked about this too, about velocity on the kick. So it's something that, that does help your drums. And yeah, that's the other thing, man. Um, this is just one VST and four drum tracks. Oh, I messed something up. Yeah. That. Let's add some, Let's add some toms. Yeah, um, definitely. The comment is, uh, imperfection is what makes songs more organic. A, are you Canadian? Uh, we are not robots, after all, hitting perfectly on every note. Exactly. And that's really, you know, I might just take these, these toms and move them over so they're not perfect. There we go. So I'm, I'm going to release this. I'm going to give this away. In the, in the sample pack. So I'll, I'll give I'll give this sample away um, in next month's uh, sample kit too. The free one that you can all download. So I'm going to use a bass VST now. And here comes another technique 
as part of this particular step in my five-step uh, fake sample program. And it just goes back to what I was saying with the Bob James example. You have to kind of look at what players are doing, what techniques they're using, and adapt what you're doing with your VSTs. And I remember way back, way, way, way back. So my, my, I hated bass lines. They, they always caused me a lot of trouble. Because I know that we're in the key of uh, C minor, right? So what do I do? I hold down C. I think that's the bass now here. Up to the um, G sharp. Hold on. Let's see. Uh, which bass VST do I recommend? Um, they're all good, man. Trillion is good. Uh, any of those contact expansions are good. The ones from Scarby are great. Um, Moto bass is dope. I heard that was pretty good. I've seen it. Um, Waves, new bass VST, I heard that was good. But so anyway, what I used to do, and you can see, my fingers, I would just hold down the bass notes. But it's boring. And then I started observing what bassists were actually doing. I would, because very few people just stare at a bass player. I was staring at bass players. I was staring at their hands and seeing what they were doing. And I'm like, I can't do that. But let me try to fake at least some of that technique. So I'd see them walk stuff up. They know the scale. I know the scale. It's C, C minor. It's not that hard. I mean, I can, I can walk it up. I'm at C here. I'll walk back up to the C. Just an octave up. Add some flair. And then I know I'm dropping down uh, to the C sharp for the second chord. I can do the same thing. So now it sounds like a much more organic bass line. It's not this boring ass bass line where I'm just playing two damn notes. You can get away with playing behind the beat, but playing ahead of the beat just doesn't sound good. There's my bass line. It sounds it sounds pretty organic. I'm gonna add another VST that um, is also a contact expansion, and uh, this one's a guitar. And so the the thing about guitar VSTs is that they're super problematic for the same reason that bass VSTs are problematic. The sounds might be great, but if you're playing them in a way that isn't consistent with how a real guitar player would would play their instrument it's not going to sound real and it's going to leave you scratching your head as to why this $300 contact expand I don't, I don't remember how much it actually cost but this $150 $100 contact expansion was a waste of money because it doesn't sound real really it comes down to the the person in front of the instrument not the instrument itself so with with this um VST It doesn't sound that real, right? If I'm playing like that. That's the type of thing I probably would have played 15 years ago, over beat. It, it, and that annoys me. It makes me want to invent a time machine so I can stop myself from playing like that. <clears throat> Each VST has its own set of it might have key switches it might have uh all these different variations of the sound depending on how you play that sound depending on if you're playing portamento depending on your velocity depending on how you're voicing your chord 
uh, and in this one in particular, you have these slide options. So instead of going, because real guitar, you can you can slide. So that opens up new possibilities now that I have experimented with this particular sound and I can choose to utilize those variations in my track. That's the chord. Oh, that didn't sound good. I like these. I'm going to copy and paste these. So that's method number four. Yes, method number four. And we have one more. Um, and this is the combination of pretty much everything uh, that I talked about today, all, all five steps. Uh, oh, at first, Billy wants to know. If, oh, no. Bill G wants to know what's the name of the guitar contact extension. It is Evolution Jazz Arch Top. Let me pull it over. It looks like this. see why people get annoyed with me in the studio because i'll do that for 15 minutes straight anyway um yeah so the, the final the final technique that i use is a combination of everything 